guys, let's start. Uh, last time we met each other, we were talking about how to say hello. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about how to introduce yourself, which is a very important part of the English language, especially for you guys, because you guys are working in a professional environment and need to introduce yourselves as professionals. So let's get started. We're going to have a lot of fun this time. So last time we learned all the boring stuff about English. Now we can start having some fun because now you guys can start actually working with the English language. So here's what we're going to learn today. Student will be able to introduce themselves in writing and in conversation. Student will be able to understand the basic conventions of English grammar. And student will be able to write their own introductory paragraph. So let's introduce ourselves. See, introduction begins the same way you say hello, and that's why I had the first lecture beginning with how to say hello so that you guys would understand where this was coming from. You begin this the same way you introduce yourself with a greeting. So hello, hi, what's up, whatever your formal informal greeting is, that is how you begin your introduction. Then you introduce yourself as who you are. I am Hamza, I am Tom, I am Mr. Smith, whoever you need to introduce yourself as, whatever. And then express your objective. This represents what it is you want by saying hello, hi, whatever. So. Let's move on to the next slide where you'll see why this is important. An introduction should never be very long. You've heard the phrase, you only get one first impression. Um, if you take a long time introducing yourselves, people are going to get bored and they're going to start wondering, who is this guy? Why is he talking to me? So you want to avoid that. What you want to do is make it clear and make it within three to five sentences. That's the best you can possibly do the proper grammar of an introduction. So English is composed very, very simply of what we call SVO, subject, verb, object, okay? So you want to make sure that your sentence, no matter where this is, spoken or written English, follows this convention. That is incredibly important. Many non-English speakers struggle with making sure that this rule is followed. So from now on, every time you need to compose an English sentence, make sure that you are following subject, verb, object. So how long should a good intro be? It should be between three to five paragraphs. It should be less than one um, paragraph so that they can get their idea across in enough time. You can get your idea across. However, it should be less than three to five sentences because in three to five sentences, you are going to express everything you need to express without taking up too much time no matter if this is written or if this is spoken. Spoken and written English follow different rules except for when it comes to these things that I'm teaching you. When it comes to this, you follow the same rules no matter what. Next week, we're going to discuss spoken versus written English. How to introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Hamza. I'm a young educator that has begun teaching for Urdu IT Academy in order to help IT professionals and businessmen master the English language. The purpose of this paragraph is to show the conventional intro written out in an easy to express format. So do you understand how I did this? You can take your time, pause the video as you need. The way I did this was hello. I began with my how to say hello portion. Then I introduced myself. My name is Hamza. Then I elaborated on that information. Elaborate means that you express, you inform more on what it is that you have already said. So I said, my name is Hamza. Who is Hamza? Why should you care who Hamza is? Hamza is a young educator that has begun teaching for Urdu IT Academy. That helps you understand a lot more about the original subject. And then finally, the expression of purpose. The purpose of this paragraph is to show the conventional intro written out in an easy to express format. So you understood why I wrote this paragraph the way I did. When you're actually writing an intro, you never ever want to say the purpose of this is because that makes you look sloppy. Instead, you introduce what it is you want without actually saying that this is what I want. You'll learn how to do it the more you practice it. So at this point, we're going to do a mock phone call and we'll come back to this so you understand the important conventions of it. But let's assume, for instance, that I am calling a company, okay? So I pick up the phone and I ring a company. So it would go ring, 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 ring. Hello, my name is Hamza. 
I've already introduced myself. Um, this is what I need to do. So my internet is down. Can you guys help me fix it? And that's where you get the idea across of what it is you already wanted. So now the person on the other end of the phone call has already one got your name and two already has all the information they need from you okay so your internet is down that helps them if you are the one conducting the phone call it works the same way the customer calls you hello my name is X who whatever your name is and I work for this company and this is uh, what can I help you with today so Coming from your end, it would go ring, 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 ring. You pick up the phone. Hello, my name is Tom. What can I help you with today? You've expressed your name, you've expressed your purpose, and you have expressed what exactly it is you are there for. An introduction stands very helpfully on both ends. So make sure your grammar is good, and it goes right back to the SVO. This is so important that we're going to discuss this in every single lecture, just so you guys make sure you know it. It's going to get more advanced at every lecture, but this is going to be the basis of it. So subject, the person or main idea of a sentence. The verb is the action being performed, and the object is the thing the action is being performed on. Let's take a quick quiz. I'm going to write a few sentences, and I want you to pause the video and find out which one of these sentences follows the co correct convention, and which one of these sentences is incorrect. Look at the first one. A. Hamza writes a sentence. B. Growing up, Tom had chickens. C. He, the chair, moved. And D. The young man won the race. I want you to pause the video here, go back if you have to, look through your notes, whatever. Make sure that this is following SVO. Write down which ones are correct and which ones are incorrect. Okay. So let's go over the correct answers. The correct answers are A and D. A has a clear subject, Hamza, a distinctive verb, writes, and a clear indication of what was being done with the same verb to the object, the sentence. D is the same way. So let's look at those two for a second. Hamza writes a sentence. You already know Hamza is the subject. Hamza wrote, writes here being the verb, and a sentence is the object. You know Hamza did something to something. Okay, if you look at D, the same thing. The young man won the race. The young man did something to something. What did he do? He won. What did he won? He won the race. But look at the other two. Growing up, Tom had chickens. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, sentence B is what we would call a hanging participle. We do not know the object of the sentence. Let's look at it again. Growing up, Tom had chickens. Who was growing up? Was it Tom or the chickens? So you want to very clearly identify that. That's why the subject always comes first. Let's look at number C. He, the chair, moved. This doesn't follow SVO at all because here the subject comes first, and then the object, and then the verb. This does not get, create a clear indication of what happened. You want to avoid any sentence that even begins to look like this. He moved the chair would be the correct sentence. Punctuation. Small review, we're going to make sure you guys understand punctuation properly and so we're going to go over new punctual rules every single uh, video. The semicolon. You guys haven't used this yet and normally you won't have to. The semicolon is one of the more unused parts of the English language. Semicolon is used when you need to express two ideas and one is separate but related to the other. Here you can see Tom ordered the chicken sandwich semicolon, Sally, comma, as well. That's how it's always worked. You put a semicolon, you put the subject of the next sentence, and then you put a comma. So what's happening here is the semicolon replaces order the chicken sandwich, okay? You don't want to say the same thing over and over again. You could say Tom ordered the chicken sandwich, period. Sally ordered the chicken uh, sandwich as well. Instead, you could just put Tom ordered the chicken sandwich, semicolon, Sally, comma, as well. And this lets the other person know that Sally also had the chicken sandwich without you having to explain that. Written out, it looks like this. Spoken, it would just be, as you already know, Tom ordered the chicken sandwich, Sally as well. 
In fact, spoken, it would be in a totally different grammatical format. However, we haven't gotten to our section on spoken versus written yet. The second sentence, I want you to bring some chips. However, photo, soda and food, not photo and food, soda and food will be provided. Make sure that you understand what's happening here. The sentence, I want you to bring some chips, is related to, however, soda and food will be provided. If I separated these two into two different sentences, it would not affect the grammar. However, it's easier to make it one sentence. So I made it one sentence by adding a semicolon and a comma after however. Colons. You use a colon when making a list. A colon can also be used to list examples. These are two very different things. Let's look at the first example. Things I need to buy. Tomatoes, lettuce, bread, milk, cookies, and sugar. It's just a list and it tells you everything that I need and each item in the list is separated by a comma and the last item in the list ha comes after an and. If you look at the second example, Hamza has a job. He teaches. The second example does not have a list. However, the second example tells you what is happening. It is an example in and of itself. Hamza has a job. What's his job? He teaches. You only use this, however, in formal business writing. If you are writing a letter to a friend, it's better to just use a comma. Next week's agenda. Next week, we're going to have a mock interview. One of my friends is going to sit in with us and we're going to pretend to have an interview with each other using the skills that you have learned so far. We're going to learn about social greetings, how to talk to people in the office, finding something specific if you're making a call, locating a department if you're calling, talking to a potential employer, and we're going to have our section on spoken and written English. We're going to learn the differences between the two, how to differentiate the two, and what the conventions are when you have written something and when you're speaking it out loud. A little bit of homework. So I want you to leave in the comments of this video a small paragraph introducing yourself. Best of luck. I'll see you guys next week. I hope we have a lot of fun and I hope we can learn a lot from each other.